What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I set a rule for myself about seven or eight months ago, which is I'm going to film every two octave major scale on the bass, and I'm not going to move on from practicing it until I filmed it. So I've been stuck in this E major loop for forever, but we're moving on today, looking like we've done with all the other two octave major scales at two options. One is a bit easier. The other is more of a template finger. You can apply to all scales, and we've got an arpeggio fingering, and I'm always disappointed pointed myself with the of fingerings. There it is. And without further ado, let's check out option one. Option one is pretty straight ahead. We just start in first position. And then just a little one, one shift. You could do one, two, four, but I like, it's kind of good fingering practice to shift on the lower number fingers when you're going this direction. So with that in mind, I'm throwing that in there. And option two gives you a slightly different way to think about this, but that seems to work well for me. And then we continue going. We do two notes on the G string. Two notes on the G string, two notes on the G string. So we have one, two, one, four, two, four. And then we just flip it around, easy. Option two, I'm not doing any open strings except the open E string. And I don't know, it's, it's a way to do it. You can pick your own adventure on these fingerings, but what I am trying to do is group two notes together, two notes together, two notes together. Just like all template fingerings. Then for this particular option, I go here, then I go here, and then I give you a little bit of electric bass kind of style playing. One, three, four. Now, you might want to do one, two, four, which is totally cool. Depends on the speed for me. I find that once I get to this area of the bass, one, three gets to be a comfortable option for a whole step. And so especially if I was playing something that was like, that's going to be a little bit more accurate than one, two, four for me. I tend to play a little bit too wide on this half step once I get up here with two, four. So three, four seems to work well for me, but it all depends on how your bass is set up and what your preferences are. my arpeggio fingerings, but this one's actually okay, and it's a fairly neat and tidy one on the bass. We play three notes, then we go up here, play two notes, two notes. And this is just kind of like one position right here. If we were playing electric bass, it would be with no shifts at all. Here, I usually give myself a little bit of a shift or a possibly a pivot to get to those notes right there, but that's your arpeggio for E major. Whether you're new to the bass or getting back into it after taking a break, Two octave major scales really give you the tools to do a ton of stuff on the bass. Regardless of where you are on your bass journey, take your time with these. It's better to be consistent and make gains over time than try to just plow through a ton of material and not really get anything done. I take these scales and work on them a little bit every single day, and I find that even after several decades of working on them, I'm still making gains. If you want to learn more about double bass technique, check out this video we've got linked up here. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.